we're live, so be careful what you say. Okay. Now, not you, Jack. I'm talking about uh, my my vid my video for Izzy Rifkin. Okay. And if anybody wants, I I I if you want last week's share, if you missed it, I I have I have a link on YouTube, so you could uh, just let me know, and I'll send it to you. This topic is such a beautiful topic. It's it, it's impossible to do it in one shear or two shearm or three shearm. And I, I mentioned last week that this true of the Ramah that we learned last week, I, my Schneider told me about it because it connected to uh, the Dafyomi and the, the Maggit Shear that was giving the Dafyomi quoted the, the Tshuva and um, much brought it to my attention. The Tshuva, what I love about it is that it intertwines Halacha and Hashkafa. And I'm, I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. Um, but first, let, let me just recap quickly what the uh, what the tshuva is about. The in the booklet that has the, sh the child's the tshuva sarama. If you recall, if you were here, if you if you look at page three, the mission on page three says that the, whatever you're not allowed to do on Shabbos, whatever whatever you assume to apply on Shabbos, they apply on Yontif as well. And the mission gives various categories and examples, and it says. If you look at like the about five lines down in the Mishnah on page three, it is the Mishnah in Beya. Beilahem Yishum Yishus Lodanim Lamikachim Lacholzim Lamiyavim. There are certain things that are not a a, a, a full fledged mitzvah, but you're not allowed to do them on Shabbos. And then afterwards, the Mishnah says, and there's other things that are a mitzvah. You're also not allowed to do them on Shabbos. There's exactly there are for different things. So one of the things is you're not allowed to mikdash. Go mikdashin. You're not allowed to marry a woman on. You're not allowed to make a dushin on Shabbos. So the Mishnah says it's a rishus. It, it, it's not a mitzvah to make kedushin. So even though it's a partial mitzvah, because it, it, it well, we'll see. The Gemara is going to talk about why it's not a mitzvah. So the Mishnah says the kedushin is not a mitzvah, but you're not allowed to do it on Shabbos. So the Gemara asks on the bottom of the of this of this section, the Gemara says, "Vah mitzvah ka'avid." What do you mean it's not a mitzvah? Why is it a rishus? There's a mitzvah to make kedushin, to have children, because it, it, it's a mitzvah to have ch children. So the Gemara says, "Let's richa this lay ishavad." We're talking about a case where he already has children and a wife. So now there's a big machlokas we shown him. What's the Mars question about mitzvah kavod? It's a mitzvah. So Rashi says mitzvah kavod on the left side in the bottom. There's a mitzvah to have children. So why does the Mishnah say it's a rishos? It's 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 optional. It's it's it, it, you're you're mechuyif to have children. You're mechuyif to get married, so you could have children. So according to Rashi, though the Mar is not questioning the halacha. The why why are you not allowed to make kaddish and ishan shabbos? The Gemara is just questioning the why do you call it a rishus? Tosis disagrees, and Tosis Rabbeinu Tam. If you look on the right side, the first line that I have underlined, Rabbeinu says Rabbeinu Tam pirish to a mitzvah ka'avid by my gazru. Rabbeinu Tam holds the Gemara's kasha is if it's a mitzvah, so why is it usher to be kaddish and shabbos? The Gemara says the reason why you're not allowed to make and shabbos is because you might xerish shem yichtov, you might write the ksuva on shabbos. But the, to, according to Tosis, the Gemara is asking it's a mitzvah, so why is it usher? According to Rashi, the Gemara is not asking why is it a mitzvah, the Gemara, why is it usher? The Gemara is asking why does the Mishnah call it a rishos? The big difference will be, what's the nafkamid and nafkamid be? So let's say you, have, you don't have children. So it, it, in that case, it's not just the rishos. In that case, it's a mitzvah. So according to, to Rashi, you still can't get married because the Mishnah doesn't say, Rashi doesn't say that if it's a mitzvah, you should be able to get married. Rashi says it, sh it should be categorized differently in the Mishnah. But according to Rabbeinu Tam, if it's a mitzvah, if you don't have children, if you don't have a wife and children, then you're, then you're allowed to get married on, on Shabbos. So that's a big machlokas, Rashi and Rabbeinu Tam, whether you're allowed to get married on Shabbos. You can't teach on Shabbos if you don't have children. If you have children, you're not allowed to. That's clear. That's what the Mishnah says. You go on but if you don't have children, according to Rashi, it's still Asr. And according to Rabbi Natam, it's, uh, it's Mutter. So how do, how do we paskin? So if you, so all, all, almost all the Rishon are paskin like Rabbi Natam. So that's on page, on page, I mean, like Rashi. On page four, we saw the, the Rambam first, Ram says, the, the, where it's underlined in the bottom of the first section. Ain Donovan Vashavs Lachotzul Miyavan Lumakachin. Xerishem Yichter. Ram says, you're not allowed to make Kedush on Shabbos. He doesn't say it makes a difference whether you, you have a wife or children or not. So by, be, if he doesn't, if he's not, if he make, doesn't make distinctions, that means that there is no distinction. Similarly, the Rosh in the middle, 
says so Lodana Velo Mekachin. And he also, he doesn't d- distinguish between when you have a wife or children. And finally, the riff says in the bottom of the page, Lodana Velo Mekachin. They all quote the language of the Mishnah and they don't qualify it. And the tour passes the same way. The tour is on the next page. The tour is is uh, in the upper part, <coughs> in the center of the upper part. Velo Mekachin. He just says Velo Mekachin without any qualifications. And the Shulchan Aruch also passes away. The Beis Yosef passes that way. That there's an issue to be uh, to mikdash on, on on Shabbos. The the Beis Yosef. Or I'll show you in a minute. So the 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 but so so the um so that's almost all the Rishon, all the main Rishonim. The main the and these are the three. The the Beis Yosef says that when he wrote the Beis Yosef, how did he know how to paskin? Because there's all sorts of shitas. He says he paskin like he he looked at the big three. The, the Ramam, the Rif, and and the Rush; those were the three Amudei Hora. Those were the three primary poskim for Klal Yisrael, and they 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 uh, they summarized the, the Piske Halacha. And each one had a, a little bit of different derech. And the, the Beis Yosef says that we go after the rope. Whatever was the majority, that's how he paskin. So, but here it's not the majority. Here it's all the all the, those three together with the tour and the and the Beis Yosef. They all paskin. That you're you're not allowed to mikdash and isha even if you don't have a wife and children. So the the, the case of the Rama was there was a a woman that uh, was engaged and her father promised a nadunya, a, a, a dowry, and then he passed away before the wedding. And it came time to, the wedding came closer. The question was how, how is she going to get a, have a dowry in those days? If you didn't have a dowry, you couldn't get married. So. The, the neighbor said, said she had an uncle that said he's going to take care of it, and and then it came time for the wedding, and the uncle was uh, he 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 dropped out of the picture. He didn't he apparently the he says that he, there was a third of the money was already collected, but that was it. And then the neighbor said, told her, don't worry, go to the mikvah, we'll take care of it. Came a, 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 the afternoon, and the chasen was shot Friday afternoon. It came Friday afternoon. The, most of the money for the dowry is 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 missing, and the chassan said, "You know what? I, forget it. I'm not. I'm out of here. I, I only agreed to marry this girl because it was a dowry. Now there's no dowry. I'm not going to marry her." So the other rabbis got together and they pleaded with him. You know, you're going to be embarrass her, and then she's an amon, a yisayma, and it's going to be she's going to be so so painful for her and all that. He he was adamant. He refused. Then they and they worked on him. For a few hours, and finally, an hour and a half into Shabbos, he said, "Okay, we'll, we'll, um, I'm willing to marry her." Maybe they promised that they'll raise the money. What well, it doesn't say in the truth, but that's what happened. So then, now the question became: so they they were scheduled to to, to have a big wedding uh, celebration on Shabbos, and they had all the food prepared and everything, you know, the chasana, and and she had uh, a, what's called a hanuna. She had some kind of fancy headdress that the cows used to have in those days. And she was already, I guess she had her makeup on and everything and her white dress. And the question is, the Mishnah says, ain't Mikachni, not allowed to Mikachni and Shabbos. So now she's up the creek. They can't, you can't make the wedding, even though the Chassan finally agreed. So you can't make the wedding. So the Ramah, who was, who was, it was this took place in, in Krakow, where the Ramah was the Rav, the Ramah asked him that it was okay. She could get, they could get, they could get married. And the main reason was because he said, that it would be a tremendous disgrace for her not to get married. The uh, she would have to she would have to go to the whole Shabbos with her with her headdress, and everybody will say, "Why? Why? How come you're not getting married?" And the food was all prepared, and everybody was anticipating. So it would be a big design for her that, the, and everybody would know the story that the reason why she didn't get married is because she didn't have the the money, and the, and because the, her father passed away, and they couldn't raise it. So it would have been tremendously degrading and humiliating to her. So the Ramah said. It's okay. How, how can he say it's okay the, the, if the Mishnah says you're not allowed to make Kedusha on Shabbos? So he said, in this situation, even though Rabbeinu Tam is against almost all the other Rishonim, Rashi, the, the Rambam, the Rosh, the Rif, the Tur, the Besa, but in this case, we could rely on Rabbeinu Tam who says that it's okay. Yes? I have a question about the circumstance. Okay? Yes? I, I realize it's a different time. Why did she want to marry this guy after the situation? Why would she even want it, right? Number one, right? Number two, when was the ksuba written? What date was on the ksuba? So if it was written before Shabbos, then it's the wrong date for the for the kedushin. 
Um, number two, how does this even solve the problem? Because they're getting married and having Kedushan on Shabbos, and everyone in the world knows they're getting married an hour and a half after Shabbos because this guy was Rifik Halperin. And then lastly, why did the cousin agree to get married on Shabbos? Because he, I assume, was a hush of a guy who knew what the halakha was. I have a lot of questions about all the circumstances around. Yeah, I understand how we talk. So, I, I got a, one more question. Yeah, what's your question? And these all those questions are great, but I have another question. To what extent is the Ramah take into account that if you wait the whole Shabbos to go to Sunday, he might change his mind, which is... The Ramah says that time. also. The Ramah right, says yeah, okay, that yeah. if you wait till Sunday, he might change his okay, mind. Okay, okay. And, okay. And, okay. and and also, he said Sunday was the day that the... that the, 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 the guy, Only the guy made weddings on Sunday on their holiday. So... so they have to wait till Monday. Yeah. No, they would have done it on Sunday, but it would have been also a disgrace. So my response to you is, my response to you, Bob, is, I, I'm not, I, you won't be insulted, please. It's a good thing you weren't there, because then, then the wedding wouldn't have taken place. And it happens to be, I'll tell you the answer to your question. The answer is that a lot of times people get upset about things, and you, and you have to put everything in perspective, and you can't get carried away. It's true to Hassan, he should have this and that. It was at the heat of the moment. He, he was also upset. He was upset because they promised him the whole time that you get your nadunya. So now maybe it wasn't a nice thing, but it doesn't mean that he's a bad person. He was upset. So this happens all the time. When people get upset, so you need somebody to calm everybody down and say, okay, don't worry, don't be so upset. We'll work it out. So. Listen, it's it, she. It's true that she was still embarrassed because they. It was she. She's sitting around waiting there with her with a headdress with the menuna until the middle of the night. But you can't help it. That was that was the that was the mitzvahs. They they they, they were He wasn't ready till then. But once he was ready, the Rama felt the best thing is she should. She, they lived happily ever after. What about the date? What he said about the date? Because Aksuva is kosher. As long as you're Mikabal Kenyan beforehand. A lot of times we have this issue with, with Aksuva because if the Chasana is right before Shkia, so when. when so some Rabbanim signed the Aksuva under the Chuppah, but most Rabbanim signed it beforehand. And they put in the earlier date because you already made a Kenyan, even if, or as if, the, if they signed the Ksuba right before Shkia, and then the Chupa is Bein so you could put in the earlier date. So, so we the just had that in the Gemara? Yeah. The, we had that in the Gemara? No, just in the top there, they said Muktam is not, not allowed, but Mukhar you can. Oh, uh, but Muktam is allowed, if you make Kabbal Kenyan, it's not Muktam, that's the point. Once you make, once he, he the Chasm was already Mechaev himself, he was Mechaev Kenyan, he took the handkerchief, so he's Mechaev Kenyan, so then. What? Why did he do that if he wasn't planning on getting married? Because if they, until the suva was delivered, it wouldn't, it wouldn't matter that he was Mechaev Kenyan. And, it wouldn't, and until he marries her, it wouldn't matter. The suva wouldn't be binding until, until he actually marries her. Or maybe there was no suva, I don't know. I mean, they could still get married even without suva. That that would they could have had the whole wedding party and everything. I mean, it wouldn't be worse than a chuppas nida. If a woman's in nida, you could you could uh, you could have a marriage. No, but the but the but the whole issue here, the whole concern we had was that Shema Yichdo that he's going to write the suba on Shabbos. Right. That's why. That's in general why you take it out. So, yeah, so therefore what? So I'm saying, how can you say that, that, that well, that's not an issue? It, it, obviously, that is that. No, well, that, according to Rabbeinu Tam, according to Rabbeinu Tam, you're, you're allowed to, if the, if the woman has no children, she's allowed to get married on Shabbos, and we're not worried. Even though there's a of Shema Yichtov, but they didn't make the Xerah when there's a mitzvah. If there's a mitzvah to get married, they, they overlooked the, uh, it's only a chshash, it's not for sure that they're going to write, it's only a chshash, so they overlooked it when, they, when the case was a mitzvah. So what? So what did they do? Did they use a ksuva or not? I don't know. It doesn't. He doesn't say in the tshuva. But either they got married without a ksuva, or because you can get married without a ksuva, you just you can't live together without a ksuva, or they wrote the ksuva erev Shabbos and they and they and they were mekabel Kenyan with the understanding that maybe it'll work out. So he maybe he agreed to mekabel Kenyan with the understanding that if they'll get married, it'll be a ksuva. But he was he himself did the chas himself didn't know if it would work out or not. Okay. Anyway, that's that's what uh, uh, yeah. That's what transpired. So now I I want to just show you that the Rama had had another uh, justification to make the wedding, but uh, before we get into that other justification, I, I just want to show you the um, the end of the tshuva, which is on page eleven. 
The Ramah says at the end of the Shuva, he says, Umali Laharach, at the very end of on page 11, at the, end, the last paragraph. Umali Laharach, Pukhazi Maimadar. He says, Why do I have to write? Uh, he wrote the Shuva is about seven, eight pages. He says, Why do I have to write a whole long Shuva? Go look and see what people do. Ubifrat bi reino, a sheesh ba kibbutz am total kel, ufamim osim, hey of of chupos, biom, biom echad, and im shachim al alayla. And the, many times they make the, the wedding drags on and it ends up being done in the nighttime and nobody complains. And so he says, you see that that's the, the minig is that, you, that if, if it's necessary, you make it on Shabbos. Umali b'tchil salayil shalal b'ez l'b'layla. He said, even though normally they make it right away at, at the beginning of the night, here it dragged out two hours into the evening. He says, but what's the difference? Once it's dragging, once it's the Shabbos, it's, it's Shabbos. Umali b'tchil salayil shalal b'ez l'b'layla. Deng kibul Shabbos binyan Baruch Hu Allah, they ain't talking about Kabbalah Sulehakal. And he says, the, the, the reason why they could, they make it at night is not because they weren't, they, they make it before Baruch Hu, because even if they don't make, say Baruch Hu yet, Shabbos is, it becomes Shabbos, because it's Shabbos. The Shabbos may atzmo kava micha shehe. As soon as it becomes dark, it's Shabbos. Kedisu arvei p'sachim, when you kiddish from Maishem. El ha-emes, shetzarach shah, maybe l'hakav v'dvar me'el, shen el esu d'arban. He says, the bottom line is, that since there's a, a need and a necessity, that's why we're mako, and, and in a situation of difficulty, they didn't make an Isidrabanan. This is what I began, and this is how I'm concluding. Certainly, it's best to try to make the wedding early. And actually, they made a Takana afterwards in Prague. Because the, 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 in Krakow, that people should not get married on Friday. Because they didn't want this to happen again. So he said, certainly, you should try to avoid it. But if they did the best they could, and then it became nighttime, and and if there's a concern that maybe the shidduch will break up, or that she will be humiliated, somebody relies on the lenient opinion of Rabbein Tam, they they don't lose. The is aneg l'shom bonek shabbos achikach, and they'll 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 have onek shabbos afterwards. We yicholah ha mitzvah chaper olav im kavanos l'shem shemayim, and since they're doing it for a mitzvah, so even if there's a tinge of question, but nonetheless they're they're, they're doing a mitzvah. Nu Moshe ben Adoni Avi Mari and Rav Yisrael, Nikra Moshe Isulish Mikrako. So that's the that's Rambam's conclusion. He's relying on on Rabbeinu Tam. Rabbeinu Tam himself said, I have in this booklet. Did I put in Rabbi? No, I didn't put in this book. In the other booklet, if you look at page two, Rabbi Tam had a sefer of tshuvas called Sefer Hayashar, and and in the, on page two, in the in the where I have the arrow, this, the Rabbi Tam writes in the Sefer Yashar, Kaddish Isha B'Shabbos, Lemish Engel Banim B'Di Tarti. There he says, this is, in other words. In, in, in Tosis quotes it, but sometimes Tosis quotes the Rabbein Tam. It's it's maybe it's not halacha, maybe it's just pilpul. But Rabbein Tam passes the Egomaisa. He says if you don't have children, you can get married. He says he says it's a b'diavid. In other words, it's not it's not a chatchila. It's better not to. But he says but But if it's in case of necessity, you're allowed to to get married. The Ramah codifies this in Shulchan Aruch. Um, the Ramah says, um, the Ramah, where is it in Shulchan Aruch? On page, on page, on page six. The, the Shulchan Aruch says, the Ramah summarizes his tshuva in a few lines in Shulchan Aruch. The Shulchan Aruch says, you see where I have the line at the top? It says, we'll go Mikachim, where I underlined it. So the Ramah says, the, the those that are make if you don't have children, you can make on Shabbos. And in the parentheses, it says, Tam. And it could be that you could even make Nisuin. Even though normally we don't pass in that way. In Bishas Tchak, we rely on this. Gam ki God will cover the and especially since Kavad Habrios is a is a super important thing, 
And it comes out sometimes that this is the situation that they can't decide what to do about the, the, the dowry. And they and they haggling until the night time. They're allowed to make the, the wedding on Shabbos. Uh, so the shouldn't do it, but in the theory he summarizes what he said in the Shuba, that if it's necessary, in order not to be embarrassed, the, the chosen and the kawa, you're allowed to make the wedding on, on, the, on Shabbos. So Shuba wasn't a one-up. Modified it in general that, that anyone could follow. Yes, he didn't. He wasn't only any any parallel situation. He he would. It wasn't just for that woman. If it would happen again, he would pass in the same way. So I'm going to show you a contemporary situation where it happened again. But that's what he says that if that the um, that that right, he's relying on Rabbeinu Tam. He, he says you could re, even though Meikra Din he would pass like the other poskim, but he was in, because of the necessity he passed like Rabbeinu Tam. So w- one topic that I w- that I want to discuss with I think I'm not going to do that this week and do that next week is how, how does it work in in, in I, I, what w- you, even though there there is a necessity you can't you can't because you have rachmanus and somebody you can't change the halacha you have to have some halachic basis so the basis here is rabbeinu tam but the, if the majority of poskim are against rabbeinu tam do you have the right to paskin like a, a, a yachid can get the rabbim. There's, normally, there's a rule that you go after a rabbim. So, by what authority did the Rama have to say we're going to follow Rabbein Tam if most of the poskim don't don't hold that way? So that's a that's a whole mm-hmm. separate topic. I'll, I'll do hopefully next week. But what 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 you see from here is is um, what an important role the um, the the, the uh, sensitive human sensitivities play in halacha. It, and you know, in the uh, in the beginning of Mishpatim, it says Ve'elam Mishpat. Right after Kabbalah Satara, it says Ve'elam Mishpatim. Asher Tosson with names. So the Arachayim Mekadosh and others ask, why say Ve'elam Mishpatim? It should have just said it. the first thing is about Eved Ivri. You should say if you, if you were buying Eved Ivri, this is what what happens. It's six years he works for. Why does it say Ve'elam Mishpatim? So um, I don't remember. Maybe I saw it someplace, or maybe I said it. Ve'elam Mishpatim means because in in Parshas Mishpatim, the the halachos. And the and the and the sensitivity for for human beings is interwoven. It goes hand in hand. So, for example, in Eved Ivri, your your uh, the, the Gemara says that you're kona adam yeah, the, the if you have an Eved Ivri, it's like you have a master because you have to treat the Eved exactly like you treat yourself. You can't eat a steak for supper and the Eved Ivri doesn't eat steak. He can't, can't have two pillows and he, and he only has one pillow. And if you only have one steak. So who gets it? The Eved Ivri. He, 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 he gets it before the master gets it. So what? 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 what ha, ha, he's the Eved. He's a slave. Why does he get it first? So the answer is because the covenant Abrius. He shouldn't feel degraded, even though he. he how did he become an Eved Ivri? One way is either he was destitute and he sold himself into slavery. But the other way is he was Machru Bezdin. He was a Ganav and he couldn't pay back, so Bezdin sold him into slavery. So he's not from the fine people. Nonetheless, the the, 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 the the Torah requires that you should treat an Eved with tremendous dignity. So in, in other systems of law, there, there's no such thing. I mean, if you if you if if if, if, if you have somebody who's working for you, you're entitled you don't, there's no laws I mean you're not allowed to be abusive, but that you have to treat him better than yourself. Okay, that's or or you have, for example, in in Mishpatim you have by a mashkon, that it says that if you, if you have a mashkon um, that that uh, from an almana and sh- and you gotta, she needs you gotta it. Give to, it back you got to give it back at night. It's it's her 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 blanket that she needs to sleep. You got to give it back because and if you don't give it back, she's she's gonna cry out to me and I I'm compassionate and I'm gonna and I you, you'll be sorry that you that you mitzayir the almana. What kind of halacha is that? He 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 get he he has a mashka on his collateral because he lent her money. He, she needed, she she was in in in, in a difficult situation. She lent her ten thousand dollars, so he, he he's entitled to have some collateral. So she doesn't have anything. So she gave him her her blanket, her uh, one of her dearest possessions, because she needs it for sleep. So why why isn't he entitled to keep, hold the blanket at night? He has to give away what kind of collateral is that? Every night he has to give her back the blanket. He can get it in the morning, but she could abscond with the blanket and, and never see her again. So 
it, again, it's because the, the tremendous sensitivity the person you have to have for somebody else. So halacha is not rigid. It's not, it's not just a set of laws. It's interwoven into halacha. And there's many examples in, in Parshas Mishpatim. So the Ega Mishpatim means that this is right after Kabbalah Satara, the Rebbe Shem say, these are the types of laws that I'm giving you. These are laws where the, 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 um, the, the halacha is, is not cold. The halacha is interwoven in, with, with, uh, with, uh, with Musar and with Hashkafa and with Ben Adam and Chavero. That's the that's the type of Torah that uh, that that and e- e- even though it's civil law, in civil law normally civil law is is, is indifferent. I mean, okay, I mean, sometimes a judge can have compassion, but here it's codified. There's there's halachas of exactly how you have to treat people, so that the that that's the type of Torah that the Rebbe Hashem gave us, and that's why right at, right after the first halacha after Kabbalah Torah was Osalva Malsa Mizbachi. You're not allowed. To, uh, to to walk up, you have to can't make a, a, a uh, stairs leading up to his back. You have to have a ramp because if you have stairs, you'll, you'll separate your feet as you're walking up, and it'll be bizarre for the mizbeach because you're exposing yourself. So Rashi says, "This is a kavu chomer. If you, if you have to be so concerned about the the covenant of stones that have no feeling, so the covenant of human beings, alachs kama kama." So it's significant that that's the first mitzvah right after Kabbalah Satara. But it's the same thing because it's easy for people to get... Halacha is super important and you have to be doctored by halacha, but it's easy for people to lose perspective. And they and they and uh, and there, there are some people that they'll, they'll make such a tremendous tumult to, that, to make sure that halacha is exactly... And in the meantime, they're destroying people. And so... Okay, you have to, certain things you, 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 you have to, you, can, you can't just say, okay, go ahead, go be Michal Shabbos because you'll feel bad otherwise. But, but with it, there's a certain framework for leniency and that's, that's woven into halacha. The, so this tshuva, the Ramah, ref, uh, reflects that. That here, it was the, the preponderance of poskim say that it's, that it's usher to make a wedding on Shabbos, but the Ramah took it on his shoulders to, uh, that he was going to be Masad the Kedushin on Shabbos. And, and he wrote the tshuva because he said afterwards he was attacked. People would say, well, how, how, could you, how could you do such a thing? It's against the Shulch, the Shulchan is not the way, and the tour and, and the Ramam, the Rosh, and the Rivdil. So how, how did, did Ramah have the audacity to do that? So he justifies himself, he explains himself. And he, and he was a young man then. We don't know exactly how old he was, but he wasn't, he died. If you look in the, in the second booklet, look up page three. How old was the Ramah? So the uh, this is a sefer Shem Hagadolim. This is a fantastic sefer. This was written. We have it here in the library in the last shelf. This was written by Rev. Yosef Chaim David Azulai, who was also who was known as the Chida. Chaim Yosef David Azulai stands for Chida. So the he he was a a super genius, and he lived in Eretz Yisrael, but he was an emissary from the community in in Eretz Yisrael, and he went around. Europe collecting money for the Yishuv in Eretz Yisrael. He lived in this in the uh, 18th century. So a- as he traveled around Europe, he stopped off in, at different libraries and he read I- I- everything that was in the library and he committed it to memory. And he quotes. He wrote a sefer called Birke Yosef, where he quotes scores and scores of svarim. And many of them he writes Reisi Biksaviad, which means it wasn't even published. It was a it was a manuscript, and he saw it. There's things that he quotes that we don't have the svarim. But he was able to see it in, in his travels, and it, and it's amazing how he, he he quotes verbatim from all these manuscripts that he saw. So one of the things that he wrote was Shem Hagdolim, which is a bibliography of authors and svarim uh, uh, of all the great Talmud uh, Chacham that we know about for over a period of a few hundred years in the Middle Ages. And so he has one section with the Marachas Asvarim and one separate section with Marachas Hagdolim. So the, the one section is with the, with the names of the Sfarim and the description. One section is it describes the Gedolim. So look what he writes about the, the Ramah. So he says on, on page three, he says, He says, He says, He was, he, the, 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 the Ramah was a cousin to the Marshal. The Marshal was a little bit older than the Ramah. And the, uh, the, they, they disagreed on many things, the, uh, the Ramah and the Marshal. He says, "Why you bucky? But I have an underline. But Chachmas Acheres Kinder Mitzvah also. He besides knowing Torah, he knew he knew science and other Chachmas. So B'chol Paul v'Ashkin Apashta Rakam also Afnegen Hamarsha Marsha Lekula. He says he he became Mekubal throughout uh, Poland and and Ashkin throughout Europe. 
he was mekubal as the uh, as the as the as the final word, which is it's an amazing thing. How how did he, how did that happen? He was you'll you'll see in a minute. He was a young man, and it's very hard usually for Jews to agree on anything. And and how did they? How did everybody agree on one person that they were going to accept their Ramah? The, the, the became universally accepted for for Eastern European Jewry. So, but he says, He says, my son, He went to the to the kever of the Ramah. The Ramah is buried in Krakow. The, uh, a few of us were there. We were at the cemetery in Krakow, and the and the Ramah built a shul in Krakow. It's called the Ramah Shul, and the Ramah's chair is in the is in the shul, and. And right next to the shul, right behind the shul, is his matzeva. Most of the, the, the cemetery has some of the greatest gedolim, the the Tosis and the Begal Amukos, and the Bach. But they, they, the Nazis, they overturned most of the stones, so they had to reconstruct the cemetery. But the Ramaz tombstone was right next to a tree, and I, I don't think it was moved. So but the, he says that he, his son saw the Ramaz tombstone, the Kosovo Matzeva, Shemaram, Colossians, this is what it said on the tombstone. Beyom Lag Gimel Baomer, he died on, on Lag Baomer, Shnash Shin Lamed Gimel. It was the year was Shin Lamed Gimel. That was four hundred years ago. Because we're now we just passed Tuf Shin Lamed Gimel about fifty years ago. So it was four hundred and fifty years ago. Ben Lamed Gimel Shana, and he was thirty three years old. The um okay. All right. It doesn't say other others say that he wrote thirty three svarim, I thought he doesn't quote it. But others say that he that he wrote thirty three svarim, and but he, he was only he was thirty three years old. How in the world he managed to write thirty three svarim when he was only thirty three years old? I don't know. And the the tombstone that's there now doesn't say this. There's a whole different nusach. So it's probably what happened was it over the course of time it got erased and they and they rewrote. The tombstone, and I, I told you last week that some some places that I checked said that he was forty three, and some said he was fifty three. Whatever he was, he was he was a relatively young man. So he he came under attack when he when he when he issued this psak, he was assaulted, and and he, that's why he wrote the tshuva in order to to justify what he had uh, passed. So now I want to show you that a contemporary. Case of where where the Ramaz Psak is invoked, and that's in the second booklet on page four. I, I alluded to I alluded to I mentioned it in my uh, in my email that I sent today with the topic. This is a tshuva from Minchas Asher. This is Rav Asher Weiss, and he has a, a Rav Asher Weiss is one of the most prolific authors. He's he's written countless svarim. He he I heard he told me once. He, he, he wrote so many articles, you know, know, he gives them out to different journals, but he doesn't even know where they are, all the articles, and where they got printed. He, he just, he writes and he writes. So, because he's a big, tremendous Marbitz Torah, he says that's what he goes for. So he has a Sefer of Shaul Sachubas, his three volumes. So he writes here as follows. Liquid. He was in Lakewood, and the Dayanim in Lakewood asked him the following question. With my Shishaya, the Chosan bought the ring, and you know the halach is that the Chosan has to own the ring, and that's why under the Chuppah, the Masada Kedushin always says to the Chosan, is this your ring? Did you buy it with your own money? The truth is, it could have been his parents' money, but then he needs to, he, either the parents have to give him the money or they have to give him the ring as a, as a present and he has to pick it up and make a king. So he says, she, So he, 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 he gave the ring that he purchased to his sister, also. You know, the worst thing that could be is, is he come, come to the chupa and the rabbi says, where's the ring? And... Did you see when I came in and I started looking for my phone? <laughs> I was in the car. So the chassan starts looking for the ring and, and he, I thought it was in this pocket or that pocket. So he was smart. He gave it to his sister and said, you hold on to the ring. He had, you know, he's, he's, he's uh, Bubal, Stumish to the night of the wedding. So he gave it to his sister. But, the, but it turned out 
She had a, 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 I guess she was married, so she also had a Kedushan ring. And somehow or another, she ended up giving him her Kedushan ring. And, 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 the, and he didn't use the ring that he had purchased. So he went ahead and he married this woman with his, with his sister's ring. So when did they discover this problem? It was Friday night. So now it was Friday night, and they were about to have Shevard Brachas over Shabbos. So now it's a tremendous problem. What are you going to do? Echad HaChachamim Pasak. So one of the Chachamim Malaik would pass him. The Kevin the Ispar HaShekadushin L'Chogu. Mikim Shetikidesh B'Tabah Shein Shalot. The Kedushin is for sure not valid, because it wasn't his ring. So you came in Mekadosh with a ring that's not yours. Tzorachu L'Achsar L'Kacha. So he has to make Kedushin over again. When we came in Shein Mekadosh, it's even Shabbos. And Allah is... Like we saw that he came in Mekadosh and Isha on Shabbos, Tzorachu Lifrosh Mimena Ad Lachar Shabbos. So he's going to have to wait until after Shabbos in order to, to I, I would I, I would say remarry, but it's not remarrying, he's marrying her for the first time. So you have to take, what? Thursday night. Thursday night he made the wedding, and then Friday night, it, it, his, his sister, maybe, maybe she tried to put on her ring and she saw it didn't fit. It, it, this, this is not my ring. So he, um, so he so he says so Tzaruchu Lifrosh Min Adachsha so he can't marry her on Shabbos so they have to separate until after Shabbos Vasurim Hay BiYichud and they can't even be in a room together Vugol Mi Dai Mi Bai Imad Dai Ngol Not only even not only if they didn't have Tashmish yet they can't be together Does the Apir Pri Person Nida Also Lehem Is Yachid If a woman becomes a Nida before the Chos and Kala had a chance to uh, to to live together so there's an Isur Yichud. So and here it's even worse. Here they, they weren't even married. But even if they already made a bia, since they're not married, she's a single girl. So there's definitely an yichud. Can all come all call upon the police? Could they be calling her by that they were at Tashmish the night before? Uh, excellent question. Uh, hang on, that's an excellent question. Vo'ol nechuku dayana ir mutar gomar shever brachs b'su the shabbos. And then the dayanim got into this big discussion. Could you have shever brachs? He says luchar pasher is rosh I don't know what the shayl is. The imein kedushin kedushal kedushin a brachas brachas v'atayin. If the if the kedushin is not valid, so it's a brachas v'atayin. So there's no shayl. They can't they can't make shever brachas. You can't, it, it, it's unnecessary to describe how tremendous was the Agmas Nefesh of the Chos and the Kala. And, and the tremendous embarrassment that they had. Everybody's going to know that they, they, they got married and they weren't married. And they lived together like husband and wife overnight. And they were, they were not living as husband and wife. And they asked me, what they should do in this situation. I don't know. That is an excellent question. Yes, it seems like a simple solution. So that's what the Rabasha Weiss writes. So first, he be, I, I, I cut out uh, most of the tshuva. He first he says, V'nech si'anan, hinei t'chil yesh la'ayin ha'im al'chein ha'kedushin b'teilim. It, the first question to decide is whether maybe the Kedushin was valid anyway. Then maybe the Chosan the um, actually uh, was the owns the, the ring because the, the, his sister gave him the ring. So maybe, even though she didn't know that it was her ring, but maybe you could say that, that it, it, there's an Anand Sadi. We know for sure that if she would want him to own the ring if, if she would... But he says, but then he says, "Lachara ain't kind of das makto das kana." But she didn't know that she was giving him the ring, and he didn't know that he was acquiring the ring. So he has a long discussion about that. Maybe, maybe uh, in the future. Some of the cases is that she switched the ring. Right? She got a ring. She did. She switched the she ring. She was probably wearing his. Ring. She was probably wearing yeah. his ring. At the same or, time. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, but they didn't. She didn't realize. Neither none of them realized until Friday night that there was a switch. So so for, so he he discusses this at length. Whether you say that maybe he's cone of the ring, he he says that there's room to to say that that he's that he's cone of the ring. And I, I, again, maybe in two or three weeks, I'll show you the rest of the tshuva. And then 
he also suggests what 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 you said uh, that the um, that Avi that that the that what that they consummated the wedding they 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 made tashma so isha niknas v'shlosha devarim because of shtar bia so one of the ways you can be called is with bia so they made a bia. What? And they have to ask don't you have to have kavana when you do that? Uh, so don't you have to have kavana and don't you have to have aid? <laughs> say that I'm being with this beer. Yeah, you have yeah. to say you're with the beer. So, so that's this is a very big topic of discussion. But but whether you say because that's the that's the issue the, the fact that there's no aidim that that the the, the is pointing out. So there's a principle called hey nani yichud hey beer that if they had yichud. Then everybody knows that they're going to have a bia, so that's tantamount to having edim. And as far as, but you didn't, he didn't say Aram and, and he didn't have in mind that he should be kaddish with it. So that's a big machlokas achronim. And it's the shy, it's the shayla whether civil marriage if it, it, does it require a get. If a if a uh, if a person, a man and a woman live together and they have a civil marriage, do uh, they go to the judge and they get a marriage certificate? Do, do they need to get afterwards? So Rav Henkin held that they do, and Ramosha held that they don't. So Ramosha held that they don't because they he didn't even though they lived together and you're kind of with with bia, but there was no intention to to make to 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 be to be, make a kenyan with the bia. And it, but on the other hand, Rav Henkin held doesn't matter if you're living like husband and wife. So that inherently is considered a a, a ma'isa kedushin. So that's also that's a big big machokas. In the uh, Rav Moshe Rav Henkin and other poskim, so that's so he he alludes to that here in the in the part that I excised. He talks about that, and he says also maybe maybe you could, maybe maybe you have the, the there's three ways kesef star ubia. So the kesef maybe he owned the ring, the bia maybe maybe the bia was valid, and then there's the star because the ksuba says that that I'm marrying you, having legal into that that, I, that you should be my wife. But the ksuva is not being given for the sake of kedushin, so it's also part of the same discussion. Does does the ksuva, does is, is the ksuva considered a star for that could affect the uh, the kedushin? So he says, Amnon. But if, if you look at the at the bottom paragraph, Amnon on the right side, Amnon lo herachti b'zeh eluchibas hakodesh gadim mitzdadim shonim sheishav alpha hem b'shezu. I only mention all this because of the, the because of the. Uh, the 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 pleasure that I have in discussing the issue. It doesn't require lengthy discussion, and all the, all the pilpul is unnecessary. It says before, like like Betzal uh, just pointed out. It says in Shulchan Aruch. But Ramad the Yesh Matir and Kadosh Yisrael Chatzil B'Shavus Kishengo Yisrael Banim. That the Ramad says that there are those that are makel, which is Rabbein Tam. The Kasha Shemar Ramad Avu Gadol Kaimul and Hachi. Even though we don't pass in the way, because the covered abrius, you're allowed to, to get married on on the on the covered abrius. So the Ramos says that the 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 so it'll be a tremendous loss. But having beer shall call a chassan, it'll be a tremendous embarrassment to chassan and kala. Im lo yi kane soz. For regal and the mock and covered a beer, so shas et chak, some kind of kadesh and shabbos. So you see that the 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 Rama says that whenever it is an, it, it's a strong need and it's an issue of covered a beer, you're allowed to make a dusha and shabbos. So he says, be matir be zayin ha now. If the Rama was matir in his case, where the reason why the wedding was delayed was was because of the nedunya. But they didn't live together as Chassan and Kala. So Elif, Kalva, Chomer, so a thousand times more. So in our case, the Yesha had to go Savi Klau. Here, for sure, you would be Kimikimakal. The Engel Chobi Zayn Gadol, Mizeh, she had starful the Hachridis of Chassan and Kala. What a tremendous design that you're going to have to separate the Chassan and Kala, the Manu Milavara Zayn Brachos, and you and you won't be able to make Shavar Brachos, but the home call here, Amal Lama also came. And 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 for sure, everybody in the city will know about it because bad news spreads like a wildfire. That's how people are. Everybody talks and talks and talks. You're supposed to treat them like a king and a queen. They will, they will hide their heads in the in the sand. 
Bebosha's part of embarrassed, Shane Dog Mula, almost incomparable. Who could I be Zion Miketsa? That's a quote from, from Megillus Esther. So it, it's going to be, Mishum Kach, Boshadli, the Eloha Yisi Sham. It seems like they asked him afterwards. They didn't ask him at, at the time. So all these Dianam and Lakewood didn't know the Ramah? That's what Batal asked before. I don't know the answer to that. I don't know who they asked. I don't know which Dayanim. But they, um, so he says, he says, uh, uh, he, uh, he says, so I, I, if I would have been there, I would have said they should take two Edim and make Kedusha. Maybe the answer to your question is that Dayanim thought that in the case of, I mean, the, the, the Russia White says it's the Kabbalah Homer, that this is a thousand times worse. It could be that you could argue it's not a thousand times worse because in the case of um, of the of the the Rama, the, this girl was an was a Yisayma, and she was and she was likely to lose her her husband, so her whole future would be ruined. The the Chas and Ka weren't going anyplace. If they if they couldn't have Shabbos and Shabbos, they were still gonna have uh, they were still gonna get married after Shabbos. So maybe the Dayanim thought it's not such a big design. They thought, look, it happens. You know, it's not their fault. They mixed up the rings. So and and they and as far as the financial loss, it, it's not such a big loss because you can have the party anyway. You can go on, go on with the party and serve the food. In terms of mixing up the rings, I remember my family used to live in Lakewood. I remember base Mesh Gabal. Everybody had the same London fog uh, Navy thing, and people would switch them all. And it was understood that. You know, if I took yours, you took mine the same. How about the rings? If the ring looked exactly similar, and then they they parted ways, would would somebody say, "It's not your ring; it's my ring"? It's it's it, it, um, it's an interesting comparison you want to make. I'm sure you remember that about. Twelve years ago, we had a share about that. If you, if if you forgot your, I if you forgot, remember, if you right. forgot your raincoat in shul, okay, right. and and then um, and 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 then, uh, or your raincoat's missing. Right. I one time on Rosh Hashanah, I one time made the mistake, which I didn't do anymore after that. When I when I went out to, to for a tikkun shofar to put on my kittel, so I did it before Musa, so I hung my jacket in the coat room, and then after. Musaf, when I went to uh, to collect my jacket, it wasn't there. But there was another jacket that was there that was about three sizes too big. So I don't know what the other guy was thinking. It it it, it showed up uh, mincha time. My my jacket mysteriously uh, was returned. But um, but that's an interesting that that's a sh- that's the post can talk about that. If if somebody accidentally they talk about by a mikvah, let's say if you left your shoes on the floor. And somebody took your shoes. So there, there's a, there's a. It happened to my towels. It happened to your towels. So, so with these two, towels. if these two rings. So there, but say? there, it's different because there, there's an anan it, it it's understood. It, these things happen in a shul. That that clothing gets mixed up, and if there's a coat room or in the mikvah, it, 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 everybody knows it. It can happen, and 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 it's like understood that nobody's mocked. But but here, no, no nobody expected that the rings would get mixed up. You can't say. That well, it's, it's, so it got mixed up. So you can have whatever ring you got is yours. They, they have to return the rings. You can't, you can't keep the ring if you found out that you had. So, yeah. the probably went to and it was the exact same ring. ring. That's my ring. Are you, are you wearing my ring? Yeah. You no, know, if they both go the exact same thing, you wouldn't even know. I mean, get them well, prob- the Well, pro- probably it wasn't it. the exact same she thing because maybe, it, maybe it was a different size, maybe it was a different yeah. color, yeah. maybe it was engraved. I don't know. But the, the, the but this. but Lamaisa she yeah, knows so yeah, you yeah, can't. Probably right. debating whether you take off the ring to wash. <laughs> Could be that's right. She took off the ring to wash maybe. Oh. The the I I Billy Gwertz when he when he uh, when I sent out my email so he sent so he he sent me a um, a link to a shear that his son-in-law Rabbi Rari Leibowitz gave. He has his uh, thirty-minute halacha shear. And you know he's fantastic. So he had a, a very similar shaila. His shaila was like this. His shaila was that the um, there were two cousins that had the same name. Let's say their name was uh, Moshe Shapiro. They both had the same name. They were cousins. They were both named after the same Moshe. So and uh, they both the Hasanim and they uh, and they both got married. And then. Um, after the after the first wedding, the um, the kala 
tells the chassan, you know, the, the, the ring doesn't fit. You, 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 the, the jeweler didn't do a good job. The ring doesn't fit on my finger. So he called up the, the jeweler and the jeweler said, I'm sorry, it never happened to me before, but bring it back and I'll, uh, and I'll enlarge it, that it so it should fit. And, and then a, a week later, or two weeks later, the other cousin, call, uh, he gets married and his wife says, hey, you know, this ring is too big. <laughs> the jeweler did a bad job. So again, he calls up the, the, other, the cousin, call, the other Moshe Shapiro calls up the jeweler and says that, you know, you, you, you didn't do a good job on the ring, it's too big. So the jeweler thought for a minute and he realized, oh boy, it must be that two Moshe Shapiros and and I didn't know, know that there were two of the same person or the same name. So when the when the first one came, I I mixed up the boxes. They both said Moshe Shapiro. So I gave. So now the, he had the same Shiloh. and and, and um, there was also was discovered on on Shabbos, I guess. This was that the happened. case? Yeah, it happened. It's a real case. So it was the same Shiloh that the uh, that do you say? Do you say that the uh, so I, I thought it's a, it's it's maybe that case. Okay, I mean Rav Asher Weiss, he has this long discussion about whether you 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 assume that the that the um, that the that the that the sister would allow him to keep the ring because in order that he should be able to get that even though it was it was unspoken but there's a numdana that she would that that's what she would prefer. So, so Rav Leibowitz thought the same thing would apply. By his case, I, I I thought maybe it's different. Okay, but we'll, we'll talk about that another time. But in any event, but it's um, it, it it was the same. It happened. The ring, so what? They, they, they paid the jeweler and got a ring. And the it's their ring. From the jeweler. So that's it wasn't the one that yeah. So that's ordered, so that's so that's that's what, that's what I was thinking about. Who whose ring was it? Did, did they was it the jeweler's ring, or was it the uh, the cow's ring? So it all depends if the. If they paid for it in advance, and then the jeweler is just fixing the size, it's it's her ring. It's not the the jeweler's ring. If it's the if if they don't own it until they pay the jeweler, so then it's the jeweler's ring. So if it's the jeweler's ring, it's much better because they don't need any Torah. Then he doesn't know anything. He he gave this ring. It doesn't it doesn't matter that the other person picked it out. The other Moshe Shapiro, Mrs. Moshe Shapiro, picked it out. He gave her the, the, the ring, the, the bigger ring to the smaller lady. So but that's what he gave her. So it, 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 if the shy was, was a shy, it has to be that the ring did not belong to the jeweler. The person already paid for the ring. So the ring belongs to the to the fellow. So that's why I thought that there's not, even if there's maybe an ansadi in, in, in Ravasha Weiss's case, that we know for sure, if the sister would have known, she would have said, of course, let him use my ring. But I don't know that you can make an ansadi here because the um, the um, I mean maybe each cow wants her ring. I mean it's not it wasn't it wasn't the cow's fault. In the case here, it was the sister's fault. She was the one that made the blunder. I think you could say it the other way around though. Right, the sister who's giving the ring, maybe she is not, but she wants her wedding ring back. Right, maybe she would have let the brother use it, but in the end, she probably the, the way they found out about it was probably she wants her wedding ring. Right, she's not going to take somebody else's wedding ring. In the case of the, in the, in the she the wasn't Kala, married yet, so she was, doesn't she doesn't have such a sentimental connection to the ring. But the, okay, the call is not the one who's the issue anyway. The issue is the two chasanim. They don't care about the ring, right? They'll take right, whatever. Right, The question is. is who, which chasan owns the ring. You're right. You're right. You're right. The sensitivity is different. Okay, we, these are all interesting questions. But be as it may, that was the um, he had the same shayla Rabbi Leibowitz uh, as. What did he do though? I don't remember what he did. I think I forgot what he what he I said. Uh, uh, maybe he knew the tshuva. I I don't remember. I I, I know I could send you the link. Oh, it's they a, the ring back again? So now they oh afterwards they switched the ring back. The question was, did they need did they need to make here? Uh, his question his question wasn't Shabbos. I'm sorry. His question now I remember. His question was, they for sure should make another kedushin. Because why should you? If there's a shayos to make another kedushin, but the question is, a, do you make a bracha on the kedushin? Because there's there's birchas erasin that you make a bracha before the kedushin, and b, do you uh, do you make shemir brachas? Because if the kedushin wasn't chal, so then they have to make 
Shaver Brachs. That was the question. They it wasn't. <laughs> well, this is different. It wasn't Shabbos. His Shaya was. His question had to do with the first part of Rav Asher Weiss's Shuvah that I cut out. With the three Heterim that Rav Asher Weiss had. That there's may, maybe there's a Kenyan Kesef, maybe there's a Kenyan Shtar, maybe there's a Kenyan Bia. That was what his Shaya was. So, um, okay, I just want to show you another. We have another two minutes. There's another Tshuva. Um, if you look on, on page two in the second booklet, this is not the only place where um, we're, we're, we're concerned about the person's sensitivities be, becomes a factor in halacha. It's throughout halacha that way. I mean, the Shulchan Aruch oftentimes says, the B'Shash Tchaki can be make or Makam have So here is a, a fascinating case. I, 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 I always worry that this will happen to me. Betol Bizman Hayoso Ben Yidgimel Shana, there was a Bar Mitzvah boy, and they made a mistake. They knew what his English birthday was. This happens, they call me up always. The, the mother calls me up and says, My son was born April 13th, 19, whatever it was, 2004. What, what day is the Bar Mitzvah going to be? And I look it up in my, uh, well, it can't be 2004, but 2010. So I look it up in my 100 year calendar. So now what happens if I make a mistake and I have the wrong Hebrew date and I give the date when the boy is still not yet bar mitzvah and the boy spends a whole year preparing Parshas Veschanan and really his bar mitzvah should have been Parshas Ekev. So that was the case. Is he allowed to lane in such a case? So Ramosha says that the um the mag he ne amag and Avram seven tough pay race pay bays heavy being tested though she cut any yachul yos makre the primigad the mag and Avram says a cut and can't lane the hikshah primigad the vakat and all the me and Zion after bezman how you ola atzmo hakare the chazin shemotzi being can yachul yos gam makre the primigad says that in the time of the Gemara the the person had the lia lane and the halacha is that a cotton can have an lia so if he could have a lia means that he could also lane. So if he could lean, so you see that he could be that even while he's a cotton, he could lean. So the the um, the uh, but the but the uh, but the achronim disagree with the primagodim, and they say that in the and Ramosha disagrees. Ramosha says that a cotton could lean for himself, but he can't be might see somebody else because there's no concept of shlichus by a cotton. So Ramosha in the end says. Look at the last paragraph. If he lanes himself, he could. But he can't lane like other for other people. Like the Magen Ram, like the Magen Ram. The And also, if the cotton has the aliyah, you can't have a gadol lane for him because a gadol can't be a shliach for him. Okay, he says l'chein. You go skip a line. After Mishas et Chak Ein Lahako, he says the the, the uh, even if it's a case of of of, uh, of necessity, we still should not allow cotton to lane. Lefizek, he time muchach v'tama prima gadol mod achron am ekil Mishas et Chak to move the tzarchiin. He says the prima gadol's position tzarchiin, so therefore you shouldn't follow the prima gadol's position. Allow the cotton to have an aliyah and to lane. Avam mikol mikol ladina in mutzar gadol habar mitzvah mishpachto. But if it's gonna, if the boy prepared the wrong parsha, the roads to cover Tarasa Lahako, and the person who asked the Shaila, if you want to be Mako, you could do that. You could rely on the Prima Gadim. So even though Ramosha rejected the Prima Gadim's position, and he, he, I, I didn't print the whole, copy the whole, the whole truth, about three, four pages, where he, he shows, uh, where he says, you know, Ramosha is a very big takif in, in Allah. So he says, he, 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 he disproves the position of the Prima God in many ways. But in the end, he says, look, the Prima God was, Prima God was about 300 years ago. He was, in, he was uh, one of the great postkims. So he says, if, if, if it's going to be a big tsar for the child, so you could rely on, the same way the Ramos said, Kedai Rabbeinu Tam So Ramos says, Kedai uh, the Prima God that you could allow the child to, uh, to lane, even though he's not yet Bar Mitzvah. So just another example. This actually, this actually happened to a Bar Mitzvah boy in our, a Bar Mitzvah teacher in our town named Jack Atkin. Who taught, uh, who taught the wrong Haftorah to Wow, who's that? Who is Jack Atkin? Uh, I don't, I don't See? know, but uh, 
is he co- is he competent? Some, some shlomazel, some shlomazel. Wow. Yeah, really, it happened to you. I I forgot it was machachodesh. I oh, you forgot it was machachodesh. So you saw you taught the wrong haftarah. She did the haftarah for for toldos. Oh, so but it wasn't an issue of of being a cotton. It was an issue of that he was unprepared. It was also yeah. we have to think right. the, the global who Can I Israel, where the, the kid it was an issue that he had spent the uh, six months right, right. He showed up at the bar mitzvah to say that he didn't learn the different half Torah. What happened? No, some guy yeah. you, you told the story. That, that what? That some boy was a little bit I don't know if he's special, something like that. He learned to run half Torah and the God said he, he can he can do that. And, 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 and he went and came to the bar mitzvah. Came to the bar mitzvah. Oh yeah, to say, I, told this, I told the I told the story. Then the casket, but he actually showed up. Okay. All right. Good. Okay. Yeah.